stuff. People message you last second and say, hey, bring me stuff. You gotta bring stuff. You got the matching. Better than Louis Vuitton. All right, we're here at RC Clubhouse for the Fall Indoor Nationals here in uh, Warren, Michigan. As uh, you can see, we got the track here behind us. <laughs> we got a uh, brand new track surface and layout ready to go here. And uh, we're gonna get inside and see what this is all about this weekend. Uh, it's been a fun time. Thanks for joining us. All right, you can see we're here inside. Look at this. Probably one of the coolest things I've seen in a long time is this from the 91 Ithmar World in Detroit. Looks like signed by a lot of participants during that event. That's a legendary event. The Semrock track. The surf's up section. Masami was the winner in two-wheel drive and Cliff Lett was the winner in four-wheel drive. I used to watch that video all the time. We're going to check out that Ackerman. Now we're just checking the toe. Okay. Show us the toe. What's the deal with the toe? Well, I like a little bit of less, a little bit more toe in the fold drive. It kind of helps numb out the car. A little bit spread out. We'll do a little bit more. So you want bump out. So, you want it to be resting toe out. Resting toe out. Just a little bit. Okay. When doing that, when changing your Ackerman to the different spots on the rack, your EPA is changing your radio. So a lot of people forget about, about that. And does your toe change too? The toe does change because so it's you had to readjust that. Had to readjust the toe. Alright, show us what you're doing there. I'm looking at the front steering blocks and caster blocks to see how much tension it's being put on at full throw. And then I do my little this little flick motion and that kind of gives me an idea. I kind of hear the sound that it that it gives off when it when it releases. And that gives me an idea of how tight the tension is on the full throw. And then I give it a little bit of gas at full throw, both directions, to make sure that that the CVD or the CVA has enough uh, clearance so it doesn't bind at full throw. And now we're ready to run. Do we got, do we got the um, the double jointed front end, or is this the this is the double CVD double jointed front. End. Okay. Yeah, I, I consider it a universal, but it's, it's double jointed. Yeah. Twenty-four point 
When you're that last guy on the stand, sometimes you gotta nab the spot. Russ showing us how to get out there to practice. Facebook 78 days since you uh, drove the RC stuff uh, so uh, what's going on here at the Fall Indoor Nationals we just got a little of your practice uh, cars looking pretty good yeah I made a change uh, that last run that my little buddy world champion Spencer suggested so that added a lot of comfort to the car just went to a longer rear camera length and lowered it and just really made it a lot more comfortable to drive around the track and I, I felt like I was finally able to run multiple laps together and put stuff together back to back the track's really challenging to just even drive around the track without crashing so that's kind of the point that I'm at right now just continue to try to knock the rust off get the consistency up and um, don't put it back to the, the field. It definitely goes when you uh, don't do it that often. But I'm having fun. First trip to the clubhouse. Uh, love the facility. The track's definitely challenging. Uh, but it's the same for everybody, too. So I think it'll be fun. All right, well, we'll check in after uh, seating here today. Uh, we got that coming up a little later. And uh, everyone's kind of getting their final runs in before seating. So uh, look forward to seeing you out there. Thanks, man. so far in practice? Just keeping it smooth is the basic right now. Uh, seeing is about to start, it's going to be a little tough just because the track is very technical. In the pitchers, it looks really flat. But once you're here, everything is off camera. I don't think there's a single spot that's flat, so it's going to be really hard to race on. But it should be fun. All right, good. Well, uh, what's uh, what's feeling good to you at this point, two wheel or four wheel, or they're both about the same? My last run on two wheel, 
my confidence definitely got a lot better. Okay. Uh, four wheel's always been pretty good. So right now I'm leaning towards my two wheel drive because I just know that my four wheel drive's been on pace for a good time now. So, so the two wheel, what are the lap times guys are running a two wheel? Uh, I think I turned the 17 oh, which I believe is pretty quick. Yeah. And then I think Dakota's turned the 16 8, and Dustin Spencer's pretty close there too. That's good. So you want to be borderline uh, running 16s, but low 17s will get the job done, right? Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we'll check in when we're done with uh, we get into qualifying and. But uh, good luck. All right, Austin, we're here at the uh, the event here in uh, Warren, Michigan. Tell us about what classes you're running this weekend. Running two-wheel mod, um, four-wheel mod, and some 13.5 stadium truck. Okay. That's yeah, working good. How are they working so far? Yep. Ours started off a little off pace, but we've worked to kind of adapt to this kind of new to us, a little bit of different track conditions from what we usually have. It's coming in good now. Good. What? Uh, any kind of tricks you've learned so far, or what's the, what's been the secret to going fast? Uh, well, this is like a lot more high speed than what you, we usually run on. So just staying out there, going clean, running your own laps. So working well. Obviously, getting on the right tires is also a big, big part of it. I think that by now we're pretty comfortable with what we're on. Alright, explain to us what you're doing here. Alright, we're cleaning some tires. Nice silver ellipses from J Concepts. So, so show us how you do it. Alright, so. With a nice J Concepts brush. Right off. Alright, so let's see. Let's see the next one. What's good, guys? You know what? This this may seem silly, but some people don't know how to do this. Yeah, it's pretty complicated. Uh -huh. you, you put a brush at the bottom of a bucket, like a J Concepts brush, and then you uh, fill it with some water and Simple Green, right? I'd say that's the optimal way of cleaning your tires. <laughs> All right. All right. So you just wash. That's a uh, that's a tech good. tip on how to wash tires, which you know, believe it or not, not everybody knows how to do. Close it up, and you're done for the day, right? Or at least for the what next run. Yeah, I think this is good for the weekend now. Good for the weekend, all right. All right, we'll see you. Thanks, man. What are you in, 16? Oh, boy. You 15? I got a corner marshal for What's going on? All right, Adam, we're here at the Fall in Nord Nats. You got uh, your usual classes. You're one of the guys that run two trucks, one buggy. So tell us about uh, how it's going here so far and uh, what you're learning. Uh, I'm learning that... Man, I need more practice. Yeah. Uh, it tracks difficult, but you know, you gotta you gotta learn it, you gotta drive it. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know what your car is doing, you just gotta drive it. Uh, we're just gonna see what we get out of seating. You don't know until you do it. That's right. So uh, how are the trucks running? Uh, the trucks been running pretty good. My last my last practice run, I went four minutes without a mistake, and I don't there ain't a whole lot of people running four minutes without a mistake right now. I think your fast lap will never matter more than zero crashes if you're off a little bit. So. We'll see what we get after seating and how it feels and how we feel about a whole five minute run. So walk us through the short course here a little bit, how you got this thing equipped. Oh man. And, uh, I mean, just a couple little things. Obviously we got the octagons on here, but it's a Reedy, uh, Reedy power. Reedy power everything, 510 with 13.5. And the, uh, I think I got the stock rotor in this one because uh, it just runs, it runs good. So I wasn't going to mess with it. Uh, going with the Reedy 5800 SC2. All the power I need. I just usually uh, I keep the short course pretty much the same everywhere. And just maybe a little change here or there. It's always pretty on. All right. So and then you got the pucks in the back here. Yeah, I, I just decided to try that. Uh, so she has the factory light car for the two wheel. I was like, well, let's try the dip, and uh, I got some of the bones for the truck, and just seeing how it runs. Okay, let's move over to the two wheel here. Let's look at it. Uh, fresh body, or is this one that you've had a couple races on? I got like one race on it, and it was a, I really like the look of the the, P, the P2K. 
it's been pretty cool so far. Just trying it out, all the body's a little bit different, but I, I kind of like my paint scheme on that. It looks pretty good. I'm digging it. Uh, going with the silver ellipses all the way around, that felt by far the best. All right, well, good. We'll check you out in seating, and good luck out there. Thanks. What do we got? We got any expectations for qualifying today? What's going to happen? Uh, I'm thinking um, Spencer's going to do really well in two wheel. He seems to be uh, synced up pretty well with the track and his two wheel setup and everything. So I think he'll have a good shot at two wheel. And then maybe a TQ in a couple rounds, build some steam, build some confidence, and hopefully be able to take uh, on the, the ultra fast Dakota Fend in the main. And, yeah, then we got uh, four wheels. Been a little tougher so far in seating. That's our guys have been concentrating, practicing. Yeah, it seems like uh, Spencer's been putting a lot of time in his four wheel, trying to get that where he wants to. He knows that it's not on par and not on the pace yet, but he's, he's, he's a clever kid. Work, he'll work it out, and I'm sure he'll be very close in the end. See what happens. That's the best you can do is you know keep fighting and keep digging for those tents, and then uh, hopefully give your shot at, at the win in the main. Yeah, so we got, uh, this is our second Starbucks trip of the day because we got going early, so before the, <laughs> before the guys get up and racing, we got to get our, another shot here, right? Yeah, we kind of have to get uh, to the track early, um, you know, close to when the track opens just because there might be somebody or some questions or some late stragglers who are looking for the 21.5 handout motors and things like that. So, yeah, just little duties, little job duties call. All right, we'll check out qualifying here in a few moments. Should I just jam it into this car, the back of this car, and just fender bender and get that on camera? Good morning. Hi, Spence. Tell us what's going on this morning. Uh, just doing some final prep on the four wheel. Seated seventh. Making some progress. How about the two wheel? Two wheel drive. The two wheel drive. She's sitting pretty. I haven't touched it. It's charged. I got to put tires on it. Sauce her up. She's ready to go for Q1. Dustin said he learned something this whole year that if you keep getting your ass kicked by something, you eventually go to that, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't really ever really touch my two-wheel drive setup-wise, especially here in the States, so I just usually try to just focus on adapting to the track and figuring out the tires because that's usually the biggest difference. Um, but it is nice to know if there's other options out there for changing setup with your teammates and stuff, so uh, that's why we have all these car options and setup changes and uh, figure out what works best. All right, good luck. Thank you. I'd like to see you above seventh here, four wheel. <laughs> exactly. How we do? Hi, Brent. Talk to us about the two wheel today. We got the 40 plus yesterday plus two wheel mod. How'd she go? Uh, 
I mean, it was kind of tough out there in seating just because you had a big range of people and then that back chicane can really collect you pretty quick. So I think I only got two laps really together uh, in uh, the two Amog class and your lap kind of a little slow on the 40 class, but practiced a little bit this morning, made a couple of car changes. I'm going to try the slim battery, lighten the car up a little bit and see how it goes. So with 40 plus, did, were you able to get a top seed there? Yeah. I mean, normally there's uh, a couple of fast locals at the track that I go to that are 40 plus and it doesn't seem to really be that way here, so I think it's just going to be a matter of survival and not break the car and it should be a relatively easy win, hopefully, but never count your chickens before they're hatched. And uh, usually your competition's like Al Horn, he's the, he's, uh, he won a race from you this year, right? Yeah, smack track, you got me there. Broke a rear arm and he, uh, he got the win, so. And then uh, on the carpet series, you got a win there, but then you also, you broke once there, right? Oh. Maybe at a 702, I think. Was that part of the series? Yeah. <laughs> it was? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I was racing with Chris Champlin there, and um, he was going good. I was trying to catch him, and uh, went over backwards, donkey flip, crash, broken, walking off the stand. So. Yeah, but Northwest Hobbies was fun. Looking forward to getting to the other road here in a couple weeks. A couple new tracks this year, which is always nice. It's not something that we usually get a chance to do that often, so um, enjoying getting to some new places and seeing new people. Alright, we'll check you out here in the, after the fall fire. Dakota, we're here at the INS race here in Warren, Michigan. I'm not too far from uh, where you live. Uh, tell us about how far this is and have you been here before? Yeah, it's about like hour and a half, hour 45, just depending on the traffic. Uh, I don't get to make it up here a ton, not as much as I want. It's an awesome facility. Uh, but yeah, I come up here usually when I'm home, maybe one, once a week if possible and stuff. So I have you know pretty good experience on how the track changes and stuff like that. So it's been awesome. It's a great facility and it's been a lot of fun. So talk to us about when um, uh, the seeding that went down yesterday. Uh, you have, of course, uh, you did top seed both. Um, uh, two wheel was close. Four wheel, you had a pretty big gap. Uh, good sign with the new car. Uh, talk to us about how things were going out there in, in that uh, seeding. Yeah, everything went well in seeding. It's kind of like a, everyone's first indication of you know where everyone's at and stuff. Just with you know practice being a little hectic and stuff. Um, so yeah, everything's working well. Uh, I think it's going to be really close racing out there. The track is uh, just all about carrying corner speed. There's a lot of off-camera corners and stuff, so uh, it's just going to be just not making mistakes. So we were talking to Spencer a little bit yesterday. We were talking about um, kind of bumping around, getting a couple tech tips here and there. We are talking to him yesterday about some Ackerman stuff today. Uh, you know, you hear a lot of racers talk about droop. Yeah. So, um, you know, and then uh, setup sheets now will tell you, uh, you know, the, the stroke of the shock that, that, that you want. So tell us a little bit about the droop and what it, what it looks like on the car and do you change this setting quite a bit and what does it look like? Okay, uh, so stroke is when you have, you know, you have the spring and the shock cup off and it's just the measurement of the exposed shaft when it's fully extended. Um, and that just changed when the car, you know, when the car's on the track, how much can it, front droop affects how much can transfer weight to the back and then when you're slowing down around the brakes, the rear droop is how much it can transfer on the front and then also, you know, when you're on the side, if, you know, in a lot of off-camera corners like this, I think a little bit more droop is better just because of cars like this, it's not, you know, quite as tippy, you have a little bit more, a little bit more travel before the car tips and, and loses grip. Um, Generally speaking, I feel like more droop makes the car a little bit harder to drive when you're on flat track just because there's a lot more weight transfer. Um, but like I said, sometimes it can also make it a lot more sticky. So when, uh, you know, with this, going with the setting, you know, on eight scale, it's something that we typically measure, right? Yeah. The droop setting is, is measured. Usually they go from the center, uh, the center of the shock here to the yeah. center down here, right? Yes. So, uh, but we don't do it that way for some reason on the 10 scale cars. Um, is there a way that you can measure it on this or you mostly do it by the stroke length of the shock and then what the droop is it is, right? Um, so yeah, you do, you can measure it from the stroke, um, but a good way to measure where your actual like droop is at um, is you just take the tires off or you can, yeah, you just take the tires off and then you just get like a short stand and you can just measure the height from like your pit board to the middle of the axle. Yep. And that'll be a good indication of where your, your overall droop is at. Okay. 
So um, I'll talk a little bit about, uh, we'll move over to the, the talk about the four wheel a little bit. Uh, second race out, uh, of course, a great result at the Worlds, and then here this weekend, your top seed. So um, do we have any idea when this thing's coming out? <laughs> Not sure on that. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's been awesome. Uh, it's good to be on a race with it on clay. Um, I had like a day and a half before Worlds with it on clay. Um, so I've got like a pretty good base set up, and then obviously Frank's been running at home. We have a couple other guys that have been running it, kind of getting more more knowledge on the car and uh, yeah just learning um, and the car is really good just kind of just been changing little things just seeing what stuff does and just kind of seeing what the car can do but it's been really good here and uh, yeah all right well good we'll check you out after qualifying but it's looking good and uh thanks for coming and congrats on the good results thank you So it's about the first two-wheel round. Uh, good run. You led a little bit. You got in there and uh, got a second in the end. Yeah, the uh, car was really good. Felt good from the start. Now I can actually pace myself off with someone. I ended up starting right behind Dakota, which she was top seed. So then I could kind of pace myself off with him. It was a little bit faster at the beginning, but I made mistakes. So then I could kind of stay in front of him for a little bit, try to pace off again. I just made a couple small little bobbles like I can clean that up and it'd be really good for the next round. Yeah, I think you guys could go a little quicker, but uh, you know, in general, I mean, I thought it was a good run and super solid. Yeah. Alright, well, we'll see you in four wheel. Thanks. going on this weekend. You're wrenching here on the uh, stadium truck. What's going on? Uh, just freshening it up, getting ready for second round. You doing anything in particular to this thing? Uh, just putting some new front arms on it. Some hubs. Cool. I noticed you got a full carbon chassis on here. What's going on with this ride? So o OBM, Old Man Billy, he, uh, he's taking over X Factory and he hooked me up with a couple of chassis to do some tuning and some R&D on. So far it seems to be working? Yeah, it seems to be really good. I just got a 3 overall in the first round, so we're going to do a little tuning on it and get it ready for the second round. Good. How about the two-wheel? What's it looking like? Two-wheel's pretty good. Basically the same thing. A little better look at it from the two-wheel perspective. Yep. Um, two-wheel's pretty good. Going to do the same with that, try to work these tires in a little bit better. And got a 14 the first round. Um, Going to try and get into the top 10 second round. So you said the truck was a three that round? Yep. Good. All right, we'll keep hammering on it. We got some fresh bodies. They look good. We'll check in with you later. Cool. All right, Chloe, we got uh, we got a guest appearance here from Chloe. She was uh, She's watching. She's uh, watching Dakota have a good first round. How'd it go? I think it went great. He looks good out there. Clean, fast, consistent. So what have you picked up on over the years? You, you've got a lot of experience in RC. What does it take out there? Practice, patience, driven, I don't know. Yeah, motivated. <laughs> motivated, yeah, motivated. hard work. Okay, so did you see all those things in round one? I did. Okay. Hopefully it continues throughout the rest of the day. Was there any mistakes you're going to get on them about? Not yet. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so uh, two classes this weekend, right? And you're not racing anything. Nope, just here for support. Track owner's daughter only races at home? Yep. All right, good. 
All right, well, thanks. We'll check in with you here, here and there All right. to get the full the updates from the pits. Sounds and, good. And uh, we'll talk to Dakota for a second. Good first run, right? Yeah, good first run. Got a clean start. Just had one mistake, but I think everybody was kind of, I want to say struggling, but just making mistakes out there. I think, I think the layout isn't too bad, but just all the off-camera stuff with how fast everyone's going out there makes it pretty challenging. And Yeah, I mean, just I just limited the mistakes as best I could, and uh, it was good. Yeah, there was some chaos in that four-wheel race. Yeah. If somebody hits that chicane in the back, oh yeah, when you're going through there, it's just a melee, right? Yeah, yeah. In practice, it was even worse, just with all the different cars out there. Man, it was it's tough. We're going really fast out there, and where the kink is, you kind of have to like late apex it and then put over, and then try to get straight again for the double. And super, super challenging. All right, good luck. Good to check in with both, and uh, we'll see you after the uh, next round. Thank you. Spencer, talk to us about that first round of uh, qualifying. Um, yeah, the first round really didn't go that well, but um, uh, trying to figure out stuff to do. There's some lines I can hit, some, hit a little better. Um, traffic is a big play out there. You can get a little lucky not having any traffic you know, crash in front of you or whatnot. I kind of had a little incident in forward dive where I believe uh, Jake Mayo kind of hit the back king uh, literally on accident. No one's really fault, but uh, yeah, I need to find some more speed. Not really, not definitely nowhere near as fast as Dakota, but um, Gotta keep on finding some, some speed each time you're on the track. I think we'll have a good um, game plan on what we're gonna do for round two. And um, go out there, leave it all on the line and see where we are at when we're done. Okay, uh, any any changes specific you're gonna make to the four wheel? I think I'm gonna uh, move the steering rack Ackerman position forward. Um, typically that, that adjustment to me always gets more steering and uh, helps the car stay more stable on uh, high speed. So, um, other than that, I think the forward dive, I might, I might try the Protec 4100 battery. Just, uh, I'm running a Protec 5800. Might uh, shave some weight by taking out some of the, the battery weight and see what that does. Um, but other than that, I think we're right there. All right, we'll check in after round two. Thanks. Well, we're back here after a four-wheel drive qualifying. You pulled a great third for the round, right? Yep. And uh, was it a clean run, good run? What What do you got? It was a good run. I made one small little bobble over the left side double. Car got a little twitchy right before I jumped, but I ended up in the gas. And I, well, I shouldn't have, I should have been a little bit more cautious, but the car was really good. Uh, I want to make some changes for the next round, make sure it's a little bit faster. Good, so uh, you got the shocks off here on the front. You were talking about going over a little bit of a tip. Uh, you were talking about working on the shocks a little bit, and uh, tell us what you're going to do here. Yeah, so I have my shocks off, like you said. You have your, make sure that you don't have rebound. So usually I pump it up a couple of times, and you shouldn't have any rebound here. Okay. Mine still has a little bit of air gap, so I might just do a fresh, uh, just take the screw out, re-bleed it, get the air out. Make sure that it's like straight up and down because you don't want your the air to suck back in. So some oil came out. Screw it back in. Tighten it. I'll wipe it down. Pump it a couple of times. And that's just like perfect. What you kind of want. Just makes the car land a lot easier. There's different ways you could do it. On certain tracks, people will put the shock bottom on. Yeah, like this. And then just lead it that way, just so it has a little bit of rebound. But that's when you know that you could do it the right way every time. So it'll have a different reaction when it's on the track. So this weekend, you're liking no rebound. 
pretty much no rebound. Uh, with as rough as that is, don't want that extra rebound because it's gonna make it unsettled a lot. All right, good. All right, well, we'll check in with you after round two. Good running out there, and uh, thanks for the tip. Thanks. We're here with Chris Darkside Designs Norlock, right? Yep. That's how we say it. And uh, talk to us, Chris, about the race here this weekend and what's going on. How's your stuff working? It's not bad. Cars are pretty good. Obviously, I'm making a ton of mistakes myself, but it's to be expected. <laughs> so show us this uh, body you got here, paint job. We'll lift it up a little bit. Yep. So uh, talk to us about doing some painting. Probably one of the things you're known for the most is the paint work. And uh, what's going on with this paint job? You got your own custom color here in the back. You call it the uh, the root beer, right? Yep. Basically, it's you know a version of the Kinwald Cavallari scheme. I've painted for Cavallari for oh man, 15 years. So I've kind of adopted the scheme to my own and went with some custom colors. So it's hard for somebody to copy. It's custom mixed root beer with some gold and it's different color splatter in it and I always like pink a lot of guys stay away from the pink but I think it stands out amongst the crowd so I use it personally on my stuff Cool. So, uh, talk to us about, um, you know, we were talking over here in the pits earlier and we're like, how many paint jobs do you think you do in a year and how many do you think that you've done ever? Well, on average I do 10 to 15 a day, 6 days a week, so do the math on that, off the top of my head I'm not sure, but thousands and thousands. I've done it since 92, it's all I've ever done for a living. Uh, like we talked about, just in free stuff, I've already done over 100 free bodies this year alone for team drivers. So. But I mean, we're talking about 10 to 15 a day for years and years and years. I mean, are we talking about, you think this is, I mean, it's way past hundreds of bodies. It's thousands of bodies. Oh, easily. Yeah. It's a year. I easily do over a thousand a year. So you're thinking that maybe at this point, I mean, it's, it's, it's realistic to say maybe 10 to 15,000 bodies pretty easily. Oh, yeah. Um, is there any that you prefer? Paintings, the style, size, buggy, short course, um, what, what do you like to paint? Some of the funnest things to paint are fist scales because you can do so much. There's so much room, so much area to work with, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with them. So the fifth scale, are, there's some that are the body's full. Right. Sometimes they're, they're, uh, they're, they're parts of the body. So what's, what's the complexity of, sometimes you have to mock up the body to get the paint job right, right? Yeah, sometimes you have to have the parts cut out so you can line them up to cut the scheme straight through. And that makes it a little more challenging, you know, keeping your line straight and in line and the fades similar size. Uh, Obviously preferential is to paint the single piece bodies. Yeah. But so when you're doing um, you're doing do you do liquid mask or tape? Uh, liquid mask. I have my own line of it even. I've worked with PBG, have my own formula. Buy it by the 55 gallon drum, spray it on, two coats, done. Okay. And what's the, so when you get a body in, you basically you you mask it right away, right? Yes, I batches of them, 40, 50 at a time. Use a just a small door jam gun. Quick as possible, easy way. I know a lot of guys use foam brushes and paint brushes. It's whatever suits your needs. Yeah, it depends how many you're doing too, right? Right. So you like to do two shots, and then then it's then it's ready to start cutting whenever you're ready. Right. right. Okay. So uh, so going back to the bodies that you like, um, touring car, 
Uh, is there anybody's paint job that you like in particular? Uh, that, that really Obviously, being an old school guy, I like Masami. Masami's always had some standout, really cool paint schemes. I do a lot of replicas of them today with some of the vintage guys. Uh, Simplicity-wise, I think Davis Bichette and Joel Johnson have had some of the best-looking race bodies. The stickers always have good placement on them. They're simple, clean on the track. And they're just nice. Exactly. They're nice, they look racy, and they're clean. They're clean bodies. The stickers don't cover up the design. Yeah. They flow together. So going to the, you know, in these days we got, what do you what do you call a lot of these, uh, we call this the drip paint job. Yeah. You know, we got the flame style, but how many different flame styles do you think there are? What, what do we got? Like? Well, you got like a bubble flame where it gets real fat before it comes into the, yep. the tips, and then tribal, you got tribal flames, real true fire or realistic, whatever they call that. I personally don't paint it. I hate painting it. I suck at it. I'll admit it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot. I mean, there's no endless way to go about painting. There's so many options. Yeah, and then you got the old school style, which is just stripes. Yep. Uh, just kind of layers and uh, pinstripes and those kind of styles. Correct. And uh, so any of these that you really prefer painting over the other or does it really matter? No, I, surprisingly, all these years I still enjoy doing it. I like doing everything. It's, I like the challenge. I like things that push me to do more. Um, as you well know, I do a lot of the monster truck stuff that's pretty crazy these days. Yeah, I mean, that stuff is, uh, you, you paint a lot of logos into the body. Yes, a lot of logos, a lot of characters. Yeah. It's, a lot of those guys want some pretty crazy stuff, and now with the drag cars coming out, those guys want a lot of stuff like the old school mini truck and paint jobs. So now you're working with candy colors and flakes and patterns. Yeah, I mean, it gets intense right away. Yeah. So uh, if you want to just give us a short breakdown if they want to get a hold of you or anybody's thinking about getting a paint job, I guess. Uh, DarksideDesigns.net, my website. It's got everything I do is there. There's paint galleries. There's all the info to get something done. Uh, you can buy stickers. I, I do it all. Anything that has to do with the way your car looks, I got it. All right. Well, thanks, Chris, and uh, nice work. Good to see you here at the race, and uh, we'll check you out on the track. Thanks. All right, Dustin, we're here at the uh, Indoor National Series race here in uh, Warren, Michigan, RC Clubhouse. First, tell us uh, how you're liking the track and what's going on here in Michigan, if you're like being here. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is actually out of all the places I've been in the world. This is the first time I've been to Michigan, uh, first time here at RC Clubhouse. Um, yeah, the track's pretty cool. It's challenging with some off-camber and uh, pretty high grip. I would definitely, as saying Spencer, I think the grip right now is getting pretty kind of similar to Nationals. We're all running, I mean, the same compounds and slicks and all that stuff. Uh, but I mean, it's it's definitely super tricky. So we've been trying to uh, run by and get a little bit of a tip from somebody here, um, you know, a little bit here and there. Uh, we talked to Spencer about some Ackerman. We talked to Cole uh, Tollard. He was talking to us about bleeding and shocks. We talked to Dakota a little bit about some droop. Uh, another thing I was going to ask about here is just the positioning of the shocks. Uh, I see guys talk about this a lot online. You guys are outside, outside here on the front arm and the front tower. So maybe explain to people um, when you use the adjustments on the, the front arms and the shock tower. Yeah, I mean, pretty much all the time in the U.S. now and like on high grip tracks, we always run the third hole, the furthest outside on the arm. Um, I mean, I know the old normal used to be middle. Um, for me, it just makes the front end roll a lot, bit, lot more. It kind of tricks you into feel like you have more steering. It turns it a little bit harder. It still steers about the same in the middle and then kind of hangs on to the corner. I feel like once you keep the car, keeps steering, whereas when you run it further out on the arm with these lay down cars, it kind of helps the car release the corner. But it also kind of depends on what you're looking for because at the Worlds, we were running middle on the front arm, but you're also running a rib front tire, which naturally pushes a lot more and that kind of tire releases the corner. Um, so that's a definitely a more major adjustment is at the bottom of the arm and then as you lean in on the tower it softens it but it's the, uh, the percentage of what it softens it compared to the lower part is so much more so like fine tuning you can slowly go in on the tower it'll slightly soften the shock but not nearly as drastic as moving it in on the bottom. 
So, and then when you move it in on the bottom, the, and in the top a little bit to some extent, but the bottom it is, is, can change your overall droop and, the, and everything. So, what kind of changes do you make there to compensate for that? Yeah, yeah, that's so I also changed with the droop. So, with Associated, the nice thing is, is we have two different eyelets, uh, a long eyelet and a short eyelet. So, if you move from the third hole to the middle hole, you keep the same exposed shaft, but you just go from a long eyelet to a short eyelet, which is two millimeters less and then that winds up being the same amount of room. Okay, so when do you think you would change? Would this track ever get in a position where you would make that change? No, I mean here, if I said most of the US tracks, we always run third hole on the, on the arm. Um, I know there's some people that like leaning the shock in on the tower, it gets it a little softer, but sometimes for me it just, I like my car pretty, I like a lot of steering, but I don't like it when the front end, like it's steering that dives over the front end and gets the car upset. I like to have my car steer a lot with the front end pretty stable. So. Okay, so what, when do you think you would, uh, what kind of track around here would you go to where you think you might make a top adjustment to the shock or a bottom? Do you think you would, anything that you can um, think of where I you mean, might I mean, definitely, that? like, for anything going on the bottom would have to be, as, like, substantially lower grip, I would say, which, man, I mean, most of the indoor tracks around, we don't do that anymore, but I said Worlds was a good example where we ran a rib front tire or, you know, like a full shot or something like that, some big pin tire where you're looking for steering. Um, the middle on the front arm is pretty good. Um, I said I know like pole at trackside is on middle on the tower. Um, has a feeling of a little bit more scary. All right, good. Well, thanks for the tip, and we'll be watching out there. Good job so far this weekend, and good luck. Thank you. All right, Dakota, we're here uh, getting ready for another qualifier. For people watching at home, do you got any quick tips about racing? Uh, yeah, just practice and have fun. The most important thing is having fun. As soon as you're not having fun, it's not worth it. For most people, this is a hobby. And just have fun. All right, so the last poll, Pollard. Do you have any quick tips for people at home for RC racing? First, the uh, rule to RC racing is just have fun. Um, that's about it, really. All right, well, we'll ask Spencer. <laughs> Spencer, we got any tips for people back home that are watching that are RC racing? What's a quick tip? Uh, first rule, buy a B6. Second rule, buy J Concepts tires. Third rule, buy Hobby Wing. Fourth, Fataba. And go to the track. Done. All right. So let's let's hear a real uh, a real tip about being on the track. Slow is fast. Okay. That's what they always told me. Okay. It's well, worked. Plus, well, Dustin, what's his? What's your input? Yeah, my my tip is gonna be kind of similar to that. It's just. When you're learning and going out and qualifying, try to drive at a pace that you can drive without mistakes. That will be substantially faster than going fast and crashing, and then the speed will build. Easy enough. We'll ask JP while he's getting ready. You got any tips for people at home? Uh, practice as much as you can. You gotta practice like you're gonna race. There you go. So. Good enough. Charlie, what's your tip for people at home of RC racing? Smooth and consistent laps, no mistakes. Okay, how about you? <laughs> Mark, what do you got? If you can make five minutes without a crash, even if you're going slower, it's still fine. Perfect. All right, Matt. Hey, Matt. We got any tips for people at home, RC racing? Uh, keep practicing a lot and um, just keep racing. We've heard everything from don't crash. Spencer's plugging all the sponsors, telling them to buy everything, but yes. at the end of the day, you gotta practice, and yeah. uh, and you guys gotta get better. Right? Yep, track time, more track time, and most importantly, have fun, and uh, enjoy the hobby. All right, we'll talk to Brent. All right, Brent. Hey, Brent, tell us, yeah. what are some tips for the guys watching uh, this video? How do you get better at RC? You're about ready to run a qualifier. What are some tips, quick tips? Uh, it's only against the clock, so that's the only thing that matters is your lap time. So you gotta be able to do repeatable lap times for five minutes, see where you stack up. All right, we'll try that out here back home. Good luck. Let's talk about that qualifier. Yeah, I mean, it really wasn't that good pace-wise, but I mean, there was a lot that I was able to take out of it. Uh, made a 
little bit of a mistake at the beginning. My first two laps were clearly horrible, but the, the second stint to that race, I was actually able to be really competitive with Dakota. Even though I got third in that race, um, I had the speed to keep up with him. Uh, just a little off with some driving. Um, we're pretty much sitting here for like two and a half hours each time we're on the track, so we're just wasting time, book facing, figuring out what to do. So I was just a little, little off my game. Uh, definitely some things I can improve. So we're on the four wheel. All right. Uh, any changes you're gonna make for the next round? I think I'm gonna ch uh, test out some different sauce. Um, been using the, the yellow liquid wrench, which is traditionally what we use everywhere. But I'm gonna maybe try some PB Blaster. I know a couple of our other team guys are running it, doing well. Um, let's see how it goes. Kind of uh, not really a huge gamble, but something different. Okay, good. We'll see you then. Thanks. Two minutes left. put you in the second qualifier. Yeah, the car was really good. That time the tires are coming in more and more. So it's just getting in faster. I haven't changed anything from the first round. So hopefully the tires just keep on breaking in and it just gets on getting faster. Good. Uh, are you noticing anything about uh, the way the car is performing? Or you, it seems like that was your fastest run so far, right? Yeah. Um, I believe Dakota went faster. A lot of people went faster now. The track was definitely like better grip wise, but uh, I think people are just getting used to driving. It's a different kind of technique because if you let off the gas here, it seems like your car gets upset a lot. So you kind of have to stay on the gas throughout the whole corner. And it seems like that's where the car sticks. Yeah, I mean that's that's good input. Um, anything that uh, you've been doing different here versus racing at home? You've made any big changes or small changes? The one big change uh, BT told me about it is that we ran a longer length on the rear hub. I'm not all the way long like he is, but I'm running almost all the way long. So that was one thing that we did at Motorama as well, just because it was a little bit lower grip and a little bit more off camber stuff. I just really settled the car down. All right, good. Well, we'll uh, check in with you after four wheels and uh, hope for another good run there. And uh, we'll, we'll see you. We'll see you soon. Yeah, hopefully it's a little bit better than my second round of four wheels. So good. <laughs> qualifying yesterday and uh, not the best the last two runs but uh, cars were getting a little better at the beginning but just didn't finish them strong right yeah it was okay 
Uh, I just haven't been driving that well, not focused enough. Everything is pretty, pretty not up to my standards. And uh, woke up this morning on main day and not feeling too well. Body aches, headache, sore throat. We're here at the track. Good. Well, you got a, you're going to be fourth qualifier in two wheel, I believe, maybe five and four wheel. Uh, just missing that one extra good run to maybe, you probably could have been second in both, but just didn't have that last good run, right? Yeah, I just couldn't um, really get it done. Uh, clearly not focused enough out there. There definitely could be some progress to be made. Plus, they're just kind of waking up sick today, not feeling that good, right? Yeah, I don't know. I started not feeling that good last night after my ice cream. And, uh, yeah. Pretty miserable this morning. All right, well, uh, I feel a little bit better. We're going to catch up with you. A mains are coming up, but uh, we still keep racing, whether we're uh, healthy or sick, right? Keep on chugging. All right, we'll see you in a bit. All right, Brent, we're. Uh, Checking in on main day, we're just going over the race number, trying to figure out when you're going to race today. Uh, you got a, a main coming up early this morning, right? Uh, yeah, I think A1 is race 6. Okay. So, uh, we're going to bump one guy into the main event from race 2 on the B main, and then uh, race 6 to a lot. The show. That's right. So, and then 40 plus, uh, you're holding it down in that class. You got the TQ, right? Yeah, I got the TQ. It's been a little bit of chaos out there, but you know, it's more track time, which is good. It's still not feeling 100% comfortable out there, so the more times I can be on the track driving my car, the better it is for me. Yeah, I mean, what I'm noticing is a lot of people are having a little trouble with this track. It's not just um, here or there. It's, if you haven't ran here before, it seems to be really difficult. Yeah, I mean, the whole track is built on a crown, which makes it really challenging as you come up and down over that, that crown in the center of the track. You know, there's a lot of off cameras, a lot of sections that you don't really notice um, until you go actually walk the track and see which way the, the corners bank and kind of sucks you into some pipes or pushes you away if you miss your line through there. So it is really challenging and you have to be very disciplined on your driving. Even at that, you know, just the way the car hops through the bumps sometimes gets you offline just that little bit and it's a lot different to try to navigate through those sections. And one thing that's really common these days is using these pipes that are the corrugated type uh, pipes, which um, everyone knows those suck you in. Yeah, you, you catch a wheel nut and you just spin right around into it. And, um, you know, with them being so big, it's hard to see over top of them at times. Um, thankfully, the driver stands pretty tall and they have the uh, you know, stands on there so you can get really high up and look down. But even at that, it's still hard to see the car around the corners. So, um, you know, the trackside uh, crew, they put uh, curbing kind of like halfway up those pipes, which really helps uh, give some forgiveness there. So yeah, that's a good point. that here, then it'd be a lot different to race on. Yeah, sure. good point. And uh, all right, well, we'll see you after the mains, uh, the first set of mains, and we'll see how it goes. Thanks, man. All right, Brent, we've been talking a little bit of tech tips with everybody here this weekend. A little bit here and there. We're going to go into a speed control stuff uh, on the Reedy 510 black box. What uh, what are you going to change? What's the uh, purpose here? So normally I run my uh, brake frequency at 2.5. Uh, that makes it uh, a nice firm feeling. But here I've uh, adjusted it to 4 kilohertz. And that just kind of makes the brakes a little smoother when you tap the brakes. Uh, especially going into those uh, tight 180s. When you have really strong brakes, it tends to make the car kind of break loose when you're on when you hit them hard. And the way I'm driving this weekend, I know that I'm kind of stabbing at the brakes, so I want to really soften that up a little bit. So I'm actually going to try going up a little bit higher for this first day so one. So four? Uh, yeah, going up to four. Okay. So from two? Uh, yeah, normally I run down here at uh, 2.5. Okay. And this only controls the brakes when you actually push the brakes on the, uh, the transmission. So it's like maximum? Correct, yeah. It's the frequency that it's firing uh, in between the, uh, the pulses. All right, cool. Well, we'll see how that works out here. And uh, then you got to save it, right? Yeah, you just scroll through, turn it off, and save. All right, cool. All right, good luck. Thanks.
Alright, Spence, we got an A1 uh, two wheel drive race in. Um, still not feeling well, but what's going on with the uh, the race? The race went pretty well. Yeah, I mean, the uh, start was a little hectic off like the first double, and I was able to just squeeze by uh, Cole and uh, Charlie. I'm not really sure exactly what happened with those two, but it looks like they kind of got into each other. And, uh, I, was, I was giving the Dakota some, uh, some heat out there. I mean, I honestly felt like I should have had that race because uh, he did clip the pipe up there on the top hill. And, uh, I just, so quick of a reaction, I just did the same thing. I turned into him. But overall, it was okay considering um, where I started and uh, how, today is, how today has been going. But we'll see how the next one goes with four wheel and we'll do uh, hopefully a repeat in two wheel. All right, Dakota, we got a two wheel race under the belt here this morning. How did it go? Oh, uh, it went good. I was able to walk away with the win. Uh, unfortunately, at the start, there was a little bit of a pile up behind me, which you always hate to see. Um, and then Spencer, uh, Spencer kind of clapped me a little bit, a couple little bobbles, and uh, he was going fast and was, was able to hold him off. I had a mistake and got super, super lucky on it. So, got to clean it up for the next main, and uh, should be good. So, the car was working well. We'll take a look at the car here. Did you do anything special for that main or pretty much stay the same? No, I've been staying the same since qualifying. Just putting laps down and uh, feel comfortable with the car. Uh, the track was a little bit less grip this morning. It's going to come up probably for A2s and probably be pretty much the same as what it was yesterday. So looking forward to it. All right, good run. Thank you. See this race now is is, um, is going to go to the limit. Uh, so uh, two wheel and four wheels looking a little more interesting than it was yesterday. Uh, you guys are looking uh, pretty sharp today. Um, I think a little bit of cleaning up of the driving, a little bit better of everything, and I think uh, it looks like you guys are in contention to win this thing. Yeah, getting close. All right, Jim, Cole's out uh, turn marshaling right now. Not a bad A1 in four-wheel, a little different than the two-wheel main. Uh, had the lead in that one. 
Yeah, he ran good. This morning we changed some stuff on his car. I thought we were on pace a little bit faster than he was in that run, but still it was a good run. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a tough race to run completely clean for the whole entire uh, five minutes, but it looked like he gave it a, a really good showing there, and uh, I, I think he's starting second. Um, that could come around to, to help him here. Yeah, I think it'll be all right. Even in two-wheel, had a rough start the first race, and we'll try to drive it back, but on this track, it's really hard to pass and catch back up. Well, the other thing is, you know, you're leading that four-wheel race, and you get in traffic, and you, you, you have to be careful, because uh, at any moment somebody messes up that back stretch, you're, you're going with them. All right, exactly. So, I, you know, he played it a little safe. There was some traffic, maybe slowed him up a little bit, but uh, in general, it was a good race. Still good to get a second out of it. Um, you're starting a little higher. Uh, than uh, than your competitor that won it, so uh, still the advantage is looking pretty good. Like I said, I think it'll be alright. I think our big concern is the two wheel after the first run, but okay. take me out of the face of a double. Yeah, that was a brutal finish. I mean, cars were upside down. I didn't even know what was going on. There's, I don't know if they were lap cars. Or, I mean, it was just, that That was the finish line and there, there was just, everything was just going wrong at once. Yeah. That's what happens when you race with squids. All right, we'll get back with it here in a bit. All right, all right, Dakota, you want to talk a little bit? You got the two-wheel drive, kind of yep. done deal now. You got that one wrapped up. Uh, it was a good race, and 
<laughs> chaos at the end. I'm not exactly sure even what happened. Nobody yeah. really knows. Uh, yeah. But uh, I'm sure you didn't really see it much. Yeah, fortunately, I, I was not involved in that. Um, I got a really good start and just had, had one mistake. And besides that, I kept it clean. The track uh, came around and got a little bit better. My car was really good, just like it wasn't qualifying. And uh, yeah, I just put my head down, did some clean laps, and uh, avoided, avoided all that carnage and stress. All right, well, good job. And we'll uh, check you out in the next four-wheel race. I know the first one was a little rough. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's why you got triple mains and uh, see yep. what happens, huh? Yep, for sure. Got a, got a decent start that time. Made a little mistake on your own. Uh, things looked like they were kind of slipping away. And then at the end, all the, there's a lot of chaos. And uh, you almost really benefited a lot from that, huh? Yeah, my car was really good. Like, at the start, decided I didn't get blunted at all. I just did it on my own. Got too close to the pipe and just got stuck on it. Driver mistake. The car was really good. I was like 10th and I drove all the way back. Could have possibly got second uh, with that chaos at the end, but the marshal's foot was in the way. So that it happens. What uh what did you end up finishing there? I believe it was fourth, but I, they're looking at the computer right now. I'm not sure what they're gonna do about it. I don't think they should change it, but there's a lot of people that got really had luck out of that whole thing, so. I don't know. We'll see you in a couple of minutes, I guess. Okay, good. Well, uh, good good job coming back. I know it's tough, but uh, you made the most of it there. and almost pulled out a second there in the end. Almost. Uh, just now, I need to keep it clean for this A3, and hopefully, we can possibly make the podium. some lunch in between uh, A mains here. Spence, tell us about that second four wheel man. A little messy. It was very messy. Um, I was in a good position. Uh, I think I barely clipped Cole and I had to kind of wait for him. 50 50 on the pipe and I just had to wait. There was a bunch of cars that went by and that race is pretty much over. So, there's a lot of corners here that have 180s after a jump. So it makes it difficult to kind of race close and not hit someone. But. All right, well, we got a two-wheel main. Uh, A3 will be coming up, you know, not too much longer. And, um, yeah, you still got a good shot here of uh, getting yourself in a second position. Yeah. And uh, in four-wheel, I think you can move up quite a bit, too. So let's see what can happen, right? Yep. We'll see. More info from Cole. We got a, a four-wheel main there. Uh, didn't go quite as well as the first one did. Uh, a little up and down in the mains. You got to finish the last two. It would be nice to finish on an up on both, right? Yeah. It's, just, it's really hard to go fast on this track. You got so many off gamers and then just uh, the kink in the straightaway. It's not helping anything. Just unfortunately lost the shock bottle on that one. Otherwise, it will be fine. So what are your finishes now and uh, uh, what's your uh, hope here how to finish it off? I just want to finish on top I like start first now on two wheel. So as long as I stay clean, it'll be good. For some reason I've been struggling on my starts today and just hope for a better start. Four wheel, my car's been really good today. Just tough luck in the last main. I have a two, so hopefully we can back up with something. Good. Well you're in line for a good 
some podium finishes. You could probably climb as high as second in both, so still make it a great weekend, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you out there. I believe four wheels still off the grab, so we'll see. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see you soon. We talked to you, you wrapped up two wheel, four wheel. Uh, gonna have to do a little more work. You yeah. got a win there though, and uh, relieves a little bit of stress, and uh, kind of leaves you a little open here to, to win this thing uh, in the third main, right? Yeah, our car was really good in the, in the second main. I uh, didn't make any change or anything, just drove a lot better. Uh, like I said, the track's coming around, getting better, getting more grip like it was yesterday in qualifying, and everything's working well. So, gonna go out there next main and just stay off the pipes. Did you do anything between A1 and 2 in four wheel, or just kind of Re reset and resauce and go again? <laughs> uh, I went back to the tires I was running yesterday, um, so I don't, I don't think that was really the difference. I think the track just kind of came around a little bit, and like I said, I just drove a lot better, so everything's working good. All right, good luck. We'll see you in the third one. Thank you. and uh, gave up the lead early, but you hung in there and then took the win at the end. Yeah, I don't know what happened with Spencer in the back stretch, but I think it was all traffic back there. I just kind of had the inside after that, and then kind of battled all the last two laps. All right, well, good run. I don't know if that's going to move you to second or third, but do you know? I think uh, Spencer got second, I think I got third. I'm not positive. All depends on where Charlie ended up. All right, well, congrats. Good run. Thank you. Solid that run, just a couple little bobbles here and there. Yeah, it's just hard to drive as fast as we're going. Tracks being off cambered and really rough. Made for good racing for the fans, maybe not for the racers themselves. Yeah. But 
It is what it is. So it was a good run, and uh, congrats on your boat podium this weekend, right? Thanks. All right, Brent, we're packing up here. Uh, you took, took the 40 plus main, right? Yeah. And uh, learn anything out there? Any adjustments you had to make to uh, take it to the top? Uh, I mean, probably the thing I learned the most was just about myself and just trying to drive consistent the whole time. It wasn't fast by any stretch, but um, I think I made one self-induced mistake out there, and that's where I really am doing my best when I don't make my own mistakes, and then the speed comes later. So I think you get back to the track and keep burning packs and uh, keep practicing. So the car, the car felt pretty good. Let's pick it up here for us real quick. Um, yeah, so I ran the same set of silver uh, ellipses all weekend long, both classes. Uh, Refoamed the rears one time. They just kind of felt like they were getting a little bit of an air gap, so I put some new foam in there. Um, they're snapping pretty hard, and it feels like that kind of loses some forward drive. So I kind of wish I would have had a second set to run, uh, maybe like the end of qualifying yesterday and uh, today, but you know, it, was, it was pretty good. I made a small spring adjustment, went to some V2 springs that time, and yeah, the car was pretty balanced. All right, well, good run, and we'll see you at the uh, awards presentation here. Sure. All right, Russ, we finished up the stadium truck main, 13.5, and, uh, you know, you came up. You said you qualified uh, maybe a little bit lower than you would like to, but in the main, you uh, put it in there and, and got second. Yeah, the truck was good. Um, I made a couple early passes, kind of kept my head in the game. The truck drove really good. Um, the new silver compound tires were great. So, um, you know, we looked at your truck earlier, uh, you know, carbon fiber chassis setup, but it's uh, primarily a T6 setup, correct? Yep. And uh, you got the F2 body on here, and uh, anything uh, you're looking forward to, any races coming up? Um, I don't know, I'm gonna have to check some schedules. It's monster truck season, so we're gonna do some monster truck racing here soon. Good, yeah, we had one on display here all weekend. It looks good, you got the J Concepts work truck body on it. Appreciate you uh, dropping that off here and letting us display it in the pits all weekend. Yeah, just kind of let the people know what I do. I'm on the side of racing off-road, also do the monster trucks, and that's what I like. All right, man, thanks again, and we'll see you, we'll see you soon. Right on. All right, Dakota, you're tearing down here after a good weekend. Yeah. Breaking some things down and getting ready to uh, leave pretty soon. But uh, got that four-wheel third main kind of really went your way. Uh, nothing, uh, no real action or chaos in that one. You just kind of walk, walked away there, right? Yeah, I had a really good start. Got into a rhythm like right away in the first lap and just put my head down and, and got a gap and then just tried to manage it from there. I mean, everyone's going really fast. And uh, yeah, just stayed away from the cars, the chaos, and really just had one little mistake. So. The car is feeling awesome and uh, I'm just going to hopefully keep it rolling. Alright, well good job and uh, we'll see you at an upcoming event, but uh, thanks for coming out and uh, good job this Thank weekend. You.